Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we're going through the main features of heart histology. If you have any questions while watching, feel free to leave them in the comments below. First, let's talk about the basic structure you see when you look at a section of the heart under low power magnification. You'll notice two external surfaces with heart muscle in between. These surfaces are the endocardium and the epicardium. The endocardium is the inner surface lining the ventricles and the atria and is continuous with the endothelium of blood vessels. The epicardium is the outer surface. Differentiating between the two is quite straightforward since the epicardium contains adipose tissue and other connective tissue structures. When we look closer at the epicardium, you'll see a layer of squamous mesothelial cells covering fibrous tissue. This layer is known as the visceral pericardium. Deeper within the connective tissue, there's lots of adipose tissue, as well as blood vessels of varying sizes, lymphatics, and nerves. In contrast, the endocardium also has a lining of squamous endothelial cells overlying connective tissue, but it lacks blood vessels, nerves, and adipose. Occasionally, you might find Purkinje fibers here, but we'll discuss those in detail later. Now, onto the meat of heart histology the cardiac muscle itself. A key point to remember is that cardiac muscle fibers can be seen in either transverse or longitudinal sections, but most identifying features are visible in longitudinal sections. So let's find a region where the muscle is well sectioned longitudinally. In this section, we can see numerous cardiomyocytes or heart muscle cells cut longitudinally. The most striking feature is the striations in the cytoplasm, which are the contractile proteins enabling muscle contraction. You can also see the cell nuclei. Cardiomyocytes are syncytial cells, meaning that they are produced by cell fusion. Each of those component cells had a nucleus, so the final cardiomyocyte will have multiple nuclei, often located centrally within the cell. An important characteristic of cardiomyocytes is that they branch and join together. Although this feature can be challenging to spot, it's wonderfully clear in this section. You can see cells running in a straight line and then a small branch of cytoplasm diverging to join an adjacent cardiomyocyte. Where one cardiomyocyte meets another, you often find structures called intercalated discs. Cell membranes are impermeable to the ions that stimulate muscle contraction. These intercalated discs contain ion channels that allow ions to move freely between cells, ensuring coordinated muscle contraction without delays caused by active transport. Another notable feature of cardiac muscle is its rich vascularity. There are loads of capillaries. You'll often see them alternating with cardiomyocytes, with one cardiomyocyte followed by a capillary, and then another cardiomyocyte, and then another capillary, etc. This close contact with blood vessels ensures that the muscle cells receive the oxygen they need to maintain repeated contractions and keep blood pumping around the body. Let's briefly examine cardiac muscle in the transverse section. Here you can see individual cardiomyocytes, some with visible nuclei. You can still spot the contractile proteins in the cytoplasm as bundles of eosinophilic material. However, it's harder to see the multinucleation or the branching characteristic of longitudinal sections. While on the topic of muscle, I thought it was worth spending just a little bit of time on how to tell the difference between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. Both have striations and multiple nuclei per cell, but skeletal muscle nuclei are peripheral, and skeletal myocytes don't branch to join with one another. If you can spot either of those features, so a central nucleus or branching to join myocytes together, you should be able to tell the difference between skeletal and cardiac muscle if you don't have the wider context of an entire organ section to look at. Within the connective tissue separating cardiomyocytes, you might find larger blood vessels, nerves, and fibrocytes producing collagen. Just under the endocardium, you'll often find Purkinje fibers. These are modified cardiomyocytes that carry electrical signals from the atrioventricular node to the apex of the ventricles without exciting the surrounding muscle. They're usually separated from other cardiomyocytes by fibrous tissue to insulate the electrical signal. Occasionally you can find them in the cardiac muscle interstitium 
also surrounded by thin sheets of collagen. Before we wrap up, let's mention the heart valves. These valves are present at the junctions between the atrium and ventricles, as well as the major inflow veins and outflow arteries. In this section, you can see a piece of the ventricle transitioning into one of these arteries, with a flap of collagenous tissue covered by endothelial cells. This is typical of a heart valve. Notice how there's no vascularity really to it, and it's very thin. You may also see disorganized connective tissue connecting the valve to the myocardium. This is a normal feature and is not a fibrous reaction. So that's a quick run through of the main features of heart histology. If you have any questions or if there's a histology topic you're finding particularly challenging, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to make explanatory videos on request. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.